Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah and I am coming to you as always from St. Petersburg, Florida in the United States where I live. I want to say a huge hello and welcome to all of my returning viewers and to any new viewers. So glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. This might be a crazy episode, you guys, because it's a little bit later than I normally record. It's Saturday right now. I hope to have this episode up by this afternoon. Um, I took a logic exam this morning, a midterm so my brain is a little bit fried. I have zero notes of any kind, just a pile of projects and yarn in front of me. So this may be a little bit all over the place, but who cares? We're going to have a great time. I do want to mention before we jump in that if you want to get a hold of me in reference to the podcast specifically, the absolute best way to reach me is via email. I have an email address specifically set up for this podcast. It is the cozy cottage crochet at gmail.com. And I'm happy to respond on any other social media. You can find me as The Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram, where I'm most active, also on Facebook, and of course YouTube. Um, but, caveat, I might miss your message. I have missed a couple of messages before because Instagram didn't tell me that I had any new messages. So, if you want to guarantee that I see it, please email me. Okay, so... Before I get into what I've been working on, we've got some administrative stuff to cover. And before the administrative stuff, I just want to send lots of love and good feelings and prayers over to Clarissa Beth and her mom, Caroline. They are both from the Crochet Cakes podcast. They are in Puerto Rico, which got hit by Hurricane Maria. I heard from Clarissa Beth just a couple of days ago. And... I was so thrilled to hear from her. They're doing okay. They have food. They have water. They live in a solar-powered house, so that means they do have power as long as the sun is out. Of course, the roads are a complete mess. Clarissa said it took her an hour and a half to get to work, uh, which is way, way longer than normal. And, of course, most of the island still is without power and without cell phone reception, so it may still be quite a while before we get any kind of a video update from them. So I wanted to let all of you know if you were worrying, they are okay. Um, of course, it's gonna be a very long road to recovery, but I'm just thankful that they have food, they have water, and that they are all safe. Also going on right now is the fires in California. Um, now I know that they're not next to where Claudia is who of the Crochet Luna podcast, but I do know some people who are in that area and have had to evacuate. I know one family has actually had their entire house burned down and they've lost everything. They only have the clothes that they left with. So that is pretty intense as well. Lots of crazy stuff going on in the world. Um, you can of course always donate to um, the Red Cross or to any kind of charitable organization that can help in those areas. Please just make sure you do your research and it's actually a reputable charitable organization. I will put a link in the drop down below for an organization that Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast found um, that specifically is trying to get power up in Puerto Rico. And that's a very reputable one. So I'll put the link down there if you'd like to donate. All right. On to Cal News. The September Shawl Along is still going until October 31st. You've got a couple more weeks if you want to join the September Shawl Along. We've got prizes, y'all. Okay, so if you want to get a prize, you have to have a finished object. If you're a super fast crocheter, you can still enter this cow. Now, we will accept crocheted or knitted items as long as it is a finished object and it has to be something that you can wear around your neck. So a shawl, a shawlette, a scarf, a wrap, um, an infinity scarf. I will even accept a cowl. So there's been tons of finished objects in the Ravelry group already and I have been scrolling through them. They are all so gorgeous. We've got all kinds of different ones. I have not finished mine, of course, which I'll talk about in the whip section. <laughs> I'm falling behind on my own cow. But 
you still have time if you want to join in. And when there is also another cal going on that's being hosted jointly by myself and Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast. It is the super simple Tunisian cal or SST cal on Instagram. And it's just a crochet along that we are hosting in the month of October. If you would like to learn how to do Tunisian crochet or learn some new stitches and techniques in Tunisian crochet, there is four washcloth patterns, two on Claudia's Ravelry group, which is a Tunisian simple stitch and a Tunisian knit stitch pattern, and two on my Ravelry group, which we've got a cross stitch, I think it's cross, cross hatch. <laughs> This is why I need notes, you guys. Okay, it's basically a, a crossed stitch pattern. And also a two-color circular pattern, which is pretty cool. A lot of people have made that one already and said it was awesome. So you should join in if you have a Tunisian crochet hook. That also goes until October 31st, so you still have time if you'd like to join. I find that when I'm making washcloths, each one takes me about an hour depending on how big the washcloth is. So I think that if you were gonna make all four, a conservative estimate would be, it would take about four hours of your time. And you don't have to make all four. As long as you have a finished object to enter into either of our Ravelry groups, I will have some prizes to give away and Claudia will have some prizes as well. That is all my Cal news. Before I jump into finished objects, <laughs> I feel like I need to do a what am I wearing? You may have noticed that this is not my normal attire and that it looks a little bit strange and kind of like a Halloween costume. That's because it is. I was not intending on filming any kind of a Halloween special and I know it's two weeks before Halloween. However, tonight my husband and I are going to a Halloween party, <laughs> which... They didn't want to host the week of Halloween, and they couldn't host it next week because the people uh, that are hosting it are going to be out of town. And so are we. So we're going to a party tonight, and I am wearing my Halloween costume. I thought it would be fun. You probably can't guess from here up what it is, so let me stand up and give you a better look. I'm a purple crayon. Let me stand back here. I'm a purple crayon, you guys. And I have this little hat, which I'm not going to wear through the entire podcast because it's kind of uncomfortable and it stabs me right in the ear. But I will be wearing it for pictures later, so maybe I'll wear it right now for a little bit. I don't know why I wanted to be a purple crayon for Halloween, but I think it's adorable. <laughs> I have this purple dress that says Crayola on it, and then I have purple leggings that also say Crayola down one side, and they have little black bands. So from head to toe, I'm a purple crayon. I never got to dress up really as a child for Halloween, so I feel like I'm making up for it as an adult. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Um, I have been a female Edward Scissorhands. I have been a kind of a, a goal, a ghoul. It's a ghoul, isn't it? It's not a goal. That's not how you say that word. I've been a ghoul. I have, last year, I was Tina from Bob's Burgers, which is probably one of my favorite costumes so far. So I'll try to put in a picture here of my whole outfit. <laughs> So you can see the whole purple crayon extravaganza that's going on, but I'm very excited about it. I am not wearing anything yarn related because it is still 90 degrees outside in Florida. And I have been outside most of the morning. I got up this morning, I went for a run, boo. And then I came inside and took a logic midterm, boo. Not fun. If anything going, is going to scare you in the month of October, it should be a logic midterm. Spooky. So without further ado, I'm gonna take this off because it's stabbing me. This dress does come with a hood, but I feel like that does not make you look like a crayon at all, so I don't know why it has a hood. Oh, this is being a very waffly episode already. It's okay. Let's go on into finished objects. I do have a couple to show you, which is exciting. 
And the first one you saw last time, I had just put the last stitch in two weeks ago that morning, but I had not weaved in any of the ends and I had not blocked it. It is my Edlothea shawl, which I made using Lion Brand Mandala in the colorway Gnome, which is their rainbow. And it is completely done. Let me scoot back. It has been washed and blocked. It grew somehow even bigger than it was before. It smells amazing. This thing is actually, it's too big to wear like this. Like it looks like I'm wearing a blanket. So I don't normally wear shawls around my shoulders, but because this is so colorful, I think that with a little black dress, I could totally get away with wearing this around my shoulders. It's huge, you guys. You stand up. It goes all the way down. I can't even get it all in the frame. It goes all the way down past my butt. <laughs> it's very long. This is the back. I don't know if I showed this last time, but it's got, those are the front post double crochets. So basically in between every lace section, you have a row of double crochet and then a row of front post double crochet. So it creates these delineations between the lace section. I love it. It's super soft, super drapey, super colorful. I mean, could you get more colorful than this? And you all know how I feel about Mandela yarn. I love it. It's fantastic. I know a couple of people are making this right now. In fact, um, Sandy, who is Sandy Chain on Instagram, is making it using the same colorway. So we've been communicating back and forth a little bit on um, the pattern itself because it's not super easy to follow. It, if you know how to read a crochet chart, you should be okay, but they didn't chart out the whole thing. <laughs> they only charted out like a little bit, which of course a lot of, a lot of patterns will do that. They'll just chart out the, re the repeat. So I found that I needed to look at the written pattern and the crochet chart at the same time to make sure that I knew what I was doing. And then randomly, right in the middle of the pattern, one of the rows is not charted at all. So, I don't know. I tried to make this several years ago and failed miserably because <laughs> I could not figure it out. But my crochet skills have improved since then, so I feel like I did just fine this time. The only thing I'm not thrilled about, if I can find the end, is it this. Like if this is the edge, the very end of it sticks up like that. I don't love it because then when you're wearing it around this way, you have this like straight edge and then all of a sudden it's like, whoop. And I didn't really realize it was doing that until after I blocked it. And I, I didn't stretch it out to make it do that when it was blocking. It did that by itself. So I think that's part of just how the pattern came up. But I think that I... If I were ever going to make this again, which I probably will not, <laughs> one of these rainbow explosions is enough for me, but I would maybe take out this little repeat right here so it would be straight. I mean, I could even just fold this over and tack it down, and then no, I'm sure no one would be able to tell, but I don't know. We'll see. I'll wear it out in the real world first and decide. That's my first finished object. It was mostly finished last time. I'm also really excited about my second finished object, which if you have been following me on Instagram, you can probably guess is the Josephina Elephant Pillow, which is a pattern by Ira Rott. I'm not gonna show you the pattern. It's a pay for pattern. It's, uh, I think I paid $5.50 for it. This is for a commission that I was doing You guys, <laughs> it's done. It's big. It doesn't look that big in the pattern. And when I was making the circles, I was like, I don't know, this might be too small. No, it's huge. That's what it looks like. So basically you've got these two circles to make the pillow itself, which you stuff firmly. Then you make a nose, 
got two eyes. These eyebrows you chain stitch on, and then it's got, I don't know if you can see because of the bow, but it's got little elephant hair, which I think is adorable, and this pink bow. And then you make the ears separately and sew them on. Now, the pattern makes it look like the ears are just going to stay out all the time. They'll be super stiff. Um, but, of course, that's not really how yarn works. So if I'm just holding it up like this, the ears are very floppy. But if you lie it down or if you prop it up on something, you can make the ears stay. These are, they're just beautiful. I'm so happy that I had the opportunity to make this. Um, it's going to be going out in the mail on Monday because it was a commission. I probably would never make an elephant pillow for myself. This is going to be a Christmas present for someone. And I think they're going to be thrilled. <laughs> I will say that I was a little irritated while making these ears because on every crest right here, these are Pico stitches. And I mean, a lot of times you do Pico stitches by chain three, then you insert the hook back into the same stitch and slip stitch it or single crochet it on. They were doing Pico stitches kind of the same, a little bit different. They chain three and then they inserted it through the front loop of the stitch and the front vertical bar, vertical bar, horizontal bar of the stitch. So basically you were going into part of the stitch itself, not just the top loop to do the Pico stitch. And I found that very irritating after a while because it's so much slower than a regular Pico stitch. Um, but I had done a whole ear that way. So I couldn't very well change it because that would change how the stitches looked. So I persevered. I did the whole second ear in the correct Pico stitches, and then I did sewed it all together. There is no way that you would be able to get this to look okay if you don't pin it out first. So I pinned all of the ears and the eyes and everything. I pinned it on. I had my husband look at it to make sure the eyes weren't crooked. I had, I mean, I used a lot of pins, and then I was very careful because these are pretty heavy, not in the sense that they weigh a lot, but they will pull the pins right out of the elephant face. So it took me a, a little while to stitch everything together. I think I worked on it for two evenings. So it's done. I don't know really what else I can say about this other than it's adorable. <laughs> and I'm just really happy. This is the back. I don't know if I showed you that. Um, I'm just really happy that I had the chance to actually make this. And I'm really excited to package it up and send it off to its home on Monday. Josephina Elephant Pillow. If you have patience, I recommend this pattern. It's pretty easy to follow. It's got a lot of pictures. It tells you how to do every single stitch that you will need. And as long as you follow the pattern, you will be fine. If you get it in your head that you know what's going on and you're just gonna do it yourself, no, you will get lost on the ears. I only had an issue with the first ear because it increases more on one side than the other and I got very confused about the increases. But that's only till row three. And then from here on out, it is the same all the way around. So I found it pretty easy to follow and there we have a elephant pillow. I do have two other finished objects both of which I wasn't even planning on making. Um, I had made a couple of these before for a lady who wanted some black beanie hats. So I made her a black one and a gray one before and she gifted them to her son and I is her nephew or something like that. So she wanted to have two more. So I whipped these up. This one's black, this one's gray. You can't really tell very well when they're next to each other. They are much too big for me because they are made for a man size head. <laughs> and they're made to be loose at that. Take it off. So, but um, I actually started timing how long this took me because um, I tend to have a severe problem with underestimating how long it will take me to do something. No matter what it is, it could be crochet, it could be how much schoolwork I think I'm going to get done in an afternoon, how much cleaning I'm going to get done. I, 
I'm always like, oh yeah, I can do that in half an hour. No, false. I cannot do anything in half an hour. So I said that these took me about an hour and a half each. And actually, I wasn't that far off. I timed it. These took me an hour and 45 minutes each. Still underestimating how long they actually took me. I did this a couple of weeks ago with some, some washcloths that I made for someone. I was like, oh yeah, that'll take me like a half an hour. No, it took me an hour. I timed every single one and every single washcloth. I made three of them, took me an hour. So these took me an hour and 45 minutes each, which I don't think is too bad for a man hat. These are both Deborah Norville Everyday Serenity Collection. This one's gr Heather Gray and this one's just black. I really like that yarn, even though it fuzzes a little bit because it is so soft, so soft. You cannot get more than one hat out of a ball unless you're making a baby hat. I did not have much left for this man-sized hat. Um, I didn't really use a pattern. So when I made these last time, I used, I believe it was the work or play beanie pattern. It's like a free pattern online, but it was too small. I had to rip it out. So basically what I did was I increased for six rows. Well, I did the initial row, then I increased for five additional rows. Then I did some rows of straight double crochet, and then I've alternated, you cannot tell, because the black yarn, but maybe you can tell a little bit. Nope, not really. Um, I alternated some additional rows in here of half double crochet, single crochet, half double crochet. There's some right here, some right here, and then at the very end, there's a row of half double crochet and single crochet. Because it just tightens it up a little, I find that if I just keep going and double crochet forever on a half that's this long, it starts to get really spaced out. And I, it needed, I felt like it needed to be tightened up. And they really liked it the last time I made them these hats, so I just made the same hat. Good thing I had written down what I did because I did not remember but thankfully I had a paper that showed me. And that's not all, folks. I have one more finished thing to show you, which I conveniently left in the living room, so let me go get that. So the last thing I wanted to show you is I have actually done two washcloths for the Super Simple Tunisian Crochet Along that Claudia and I are hosting. First one, actually it was not in the living room, it's in the kitchen, and it is dirty because I'm using it as a dish rag. And it is very stiff because it has been used to wash dishes and then left to air dry. <laughs> and it's a little discolored. I'm not sure what it was used to clean. Probably like mac and cheese or mustard or something because it's got like this yellow part now. But this is dishcloth number one. I chained 26 and I just did Tunisian simple stitch all the way around and bound off. I did not even edge this thing. Second one is the Tunisian Knit Stitch dishcloth that she has on her Ravelry group. I have not made mine yet, the ones in my Ravelry group. And I thought that I was being really clever because what I did was, instead of doing Knit Stitch all the way across, I did three stitches of Tunisian Simple Stitch, then Knit Stitch, and then three more, which is great. It makes the edges on these sides not curl. Did I do that on the top? No, look at this. <laughs> It's all sausage roll. So I don't know. I probably am not going to be bothered to edge this. I probably will not. But maybe, maybe. This is what the knit stitch looks like. I think it's awesome. And then this is the back. You can see that these two backs look similar, but that this one is a lot more thick. This one is a lot more tightly woven together and it's not as bumpy on the back. I find that Tunisian simple stitch washcloths are the best for doing dish dishes because they have like a scrubby nature to them, whereas this is pretty soft. So if you're trying to get stuck on food off, probably not. I may have to edge this actually because it doesn't come out of the dryer completely dry because it rolls like this. And this under here is still wet, which I don't want there to be like moldy. That would be gross. So I may have to get around to edging this. The yarn I'm using for this, I actually got at Joann's. It's the Bernat Handicrafter Cotton, the huge ball, in which you get 608 yards, 340 grams. So 
It's the colorway Freshly Pressed, which looks like this. I got it, these are normally $15. This was on clearance for $5. So this is what I bought to do the washcloths with for the Tunisian crochet along. And I actually have made five washcloths out of this. So I've showed you these two, but the danger, <laughs> maybe the joy of taking your yarn with you everywhere is that someone's gonna see you and be like, oh, um, what are you doing? You'd be like, oh, I'm crocheting dishcloths. Oh, can you make me some? So I made three additional Tunisian simple stitch dishcloths, which each took me an hour for someone who that I know. Now, I made hers a little bit bigger. I chained 30, and then I did Tunisian simple stitch across the whole way for 26 rows, I believe, and then I did a single crochet edge around the, around the whole thing to make it lie down. But I'm pretty happy with this yarn. This has made five washcloths already, and look at how much is left. That's a lot. I could probably get three, four more, maybe, out of this for $5 to make like 10 washcloths. That's a lot, so I'm pretty happy with that. That is all my finished objects. So that means it's time to move on to works in progress. There are only two because I just finished all of those commissions. I just finished the elephant pillow, those two hats, and the three washcloths. Those pretty much took most of my crochet time for the last two weeks. And actually yesterday was the first time in two weeks that I have not had any kind of a commission on the go. So I could turn to my own projects. So I immediately picked up my September shawl along project, which has been a little bit neglected. And you heard me complaining about it last week because I decided to do a lace weight project, which is dumb. It's the Leaf Lines Shawl by Aparna Rolf. And I have actually made some noticeable progress on this. You may remember last time it was teeny tiny and it's still gonna be really small, but whoop, it's actually a lot bigger now than it was. So right now I have actually finished the main body of the shawl. It's not blocked. I can get it around, although it's it barely, so I'd have to pin it. When it's blocked, it will grow. Um, but I still have about eight, eight to 10 rows on this to do uh, because I have to do the edging, which means I'm gonna have to start paying attention to the pattern again because I pretty much had it memorized. It, I, I think it's a fantastic pattern. It looks complicated, but it's not because it's all front post, back post, double crochets, and just regular double crochets. So if you can do that, you can do this. I don't necessarily recommend making it in a lace weight because it will take you forever, but it looks so impressive. And this is the Knit Picks Baby Alpaca that I got on sale, of course. $4 for one of these. You get 440 yards, 100% Baby Alpaca. And I'm really happy with it. I think I'm much more optimistic than I was last week <laughs> about whether I was going to get this finished for the shawl along. I thought I was not going to get it finished. But now that I only have the edging, I think it's possible if I really buckle down and work on it a lot. Because each row right now is taking me about a half an hour to 45 minutes for one row. So if I have 10 more rows, that could be eight hours of work still on this because the front post double crochet rows are easy. It's the back post double crochet rows that get really fiddly. And I have improved my speed quite a bit by working on this project, but it still just takes forever. So I'm, I'm happier with it than I was last week. I'm going to stop complaining because it is really beautiful. So I'm happy. There is someone else for the September shawl along who has already made this pattern and posted it in the finished object group and it's gorgeous. The last work in progress, I know there's only two <laughs> because I've been making all this other stuff, 
is my sweater for the Back to School Sweater Cow, which is being hosted by Helen and Tamara. Tamara is of Crafty Escapism. And the, the threads for these are in the Crochet Circle podcast Ravelry group. I have finished, well, let me tell you the pattern. It's the Bookworm Sweater by Natasha Robarge. It's this one. It's in the Love of Crochet magazine, fall 2017. It's so beautiful. Like the minute I saw it, I knew I had to make it. But it's so irritating. <laughs> the pattern drives me bonkers. I cannot, I honestly can't wait to be done with it. And I finished the main body. And it is small. Now, thankfully, I am made this in 100% acrylic yarn. It's Knit Picks Brava Sport, which is 100% acrylic in their colorway Asphalt Heather. If this was not 100% acrylic, I would have to frog it. It would not fit. As it stands right now, I don't even know if I should bother to try to put this on. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm putting it on the right way, the front and the back. Yes, okay. I can get it on, but it's tight. It's tight. It's tight here. I don't like how tight the neckline is. The armholes are actually a little tight, and it is not long enough. It goes to right here, and I need the sweater to be at least down here. I need another couple inches out of this. If this was wool, I think I'd have to frog it. I would not wear this if this is the size I had to live with. It's too small. I'm too uncomfortable. Luckily, oh, oh my goodness. Maybe that was a bad idea to try to put a sweater on over your head in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> Shenanigans. Luckily, this is acrylic, which means I can block it to death. I can pin it out, like, like really stretch it, and then steam iron it, and it will stay that way forever, which means if I can get a couple inches width out of it and, a, and maybe three inches length, which I think I can do if I use a lot of pins, then it will fit. I also can stretch out these armholes probably at least a half an inch and I can make this neckline a little bit bigger so that it doesn't, I don't feel like it's choking me. I, I really honestly, I hate to be mean and I'm not trying to be mean, but I can't, I can't in good conscience recommend this that you try this pattern unless you're a pretty experienced crocheter because she just doesn't bother to explain things. And this is too short. I got gauge. This is too short. Even after I added a whole pattern repeat before starting the decreases for the top. And I really dislike how she did the decreases for the top because what basically what she says to do, so this is supposed to actually, this shoulder seam is supposed to be off your shoulder a little bit. So she's trying to decrease and not make you don't make every row all the way up to the top and just seam it. She starts going in, so you only start making the middle part of the row. But what she'll say is, at the end of the row, turn, leaving a long float, start at this stitch, which could be like five or seven stitches away from where you currently are. So if I had done that, I would have had all these crazy floats underneath here, and she says, don't worry about the float. It'll be secured in the shoulder seam. But then when you get to the directions on how to seam up the garment, it does not tell you anything about hiding floats in your shoulder seam at all. It just says seam it up. Like what, what, I don't know. It just irritates me when you're vague about directions. Like if you want me to leave floats, okay, but then tell me what to do with them. I didn't leave any floats because I didn't like how it looked. Um, I had left a couple and then I frogged it, ripped back a couple rows. And then what I did is if I started on this stitch and I needed to be here, 
I would just slip stitch until I got to the stitch that I needed to be on and start from there. The pattern calls for you to make the front back and then make the sleeves and then seam the shoulders up and do the neckline, but I was, I was not happy <laughs> the other night when I was working on this. So I went ahead and seamed it up and did the neckline, which is, it's so hard to show it because it's so dark, but it's basically, a, it's got some like front post ribbing on it for two rows. I have not weaved any of the ends in. There's all kinds of ends on the inside of this. But I think it's going to be really awesome. But right now, I'm not happy with it. I do, however, have part of a sleeve to show you, which I'm excited about. This is the sleeve. And because this is my Halloween sweater for the Back to School Sweater Cow, I have an orange Halloween pumpkin stitch marker. Not a pumpkin, that's a skull. That's a skull, that's not a pumpkin. So this is the sleeve. I also have a complaint about how she does her increases. So you increase, you're supposed to increase a certain number of stitches on this seam right here until you get to, for the size I'm making, 20. So basically in the pattern she says increase this way, which is, you can follow, and then it says until you have added a whole pattern repeat but she doesn't tell you at all how to actually add the pattern repeat. So you have like, a, the pattern repeats 12 stitches. So if I have 12 extra stitches, which I think I do now, I don't know how to get another pattern repeat out of this because the stitches are evenly split on both, side of the, both sides of the seam. So if all of the stitches were on this side, I could just add a pattern repeat and keep going around, but then the seam would be crooked but only half of the stitches, I can't just start another pattern repeat here because there's not enough stitches on this side. I, I have thought about this for a day and a half now and I cannot for the life of me figure out how to add a pattern repeat to this. So I think that it's actually, I'm just gonna leave it as long as both sleeves are the same, who cares? I'm just gonna leave it having a bigger area of solid here and just leave the diamonds on the front and I am going to have to do more again than she called for. So it's, it, this is my sleeve because we're going to add a little bit of ribbing. This is supposed to be up here now. I've got maybe four or five rows left to do. It's going to be way too short. So I think I'm just going to keep going, keep increasing a little bit. Um, I, I've got a few rows left to do. And once I've done all the increases, just keep going until I've done a whole nother diamond. I would rather have the sleeve be... Like if I pull this all the way up to my underarm, not even quite, like it's not even, I, look at how much arm I have left. Like that just goes to my elbow. I feel like all I'm doing is complaining about this pattern. It breaks my heart, honestly, because the minute I saw it, I was like, oh, I have got to make that pattern. It's gonna be perfect. And I've had nothing, it's caused me nothing but a headache. I know it's gonna be worth it because I love the pattern and I cannot wait to wear this. But the sizing issues, even after I got gauged with my yarn and the pattern issues, just not a great project. I, I am normally a end result and a process crocheter. Like I enjoy the process of making something and seeing it grow. I have not enjoyed this project. The only part I've enjoyed is from here, where I finally figured out what was going on, till about here, because I had that pattern repeat memorized and I could just do it without looking at her notes. <laughs> so I, hopefully I'll have the sleeve done next time and the other sleeve, because I would really, really like to have this done by Halloween. I don't know that I'll be able to wear it on Halloween because it's so, so hot, you guys. It doesn't cool down here until, I don't know, January. <laughs> It'll start to get a little bit cooler. Like it's, it's a little bit cooler. It's like 90, 85 now instead of 95 or 100. So, I mean, that's good. But if I don't get it done by Halloween, that's okay. 
The last thing that I have to show you is I have one acquisition. Now, I almost never buy really fancy yarn. And by fancy, I mean yarn that's like $30 a skein or a hank. Because if I buy this Nipix yarn that's $2 a ball, I could buy enough for a whole sweater in $30. Or two sweaters, for that matter, depending on how much I need. There's a couple of companies that every time I see their yarn, I'm like, mmm. Like, I know I'm going to buy their yarn eventually. One of those is the lovely Kristen from Woolen Vine Yarns. I think her yarns are awesome. Um, also, Molly Klein Designs on Instagram. I think her yarn is fabulous. I haven't purchased it yet, but every time I see it, I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. And then Expression Fiber Arts makes some of the most beautiful yarn. Now, I've never seen it in person, which is easy. It's why it's, I haven't purchased it because it's easier for me to say no to something when I'm buying it online than it is when it's in, right in front of me and I can squish it. So I haven't bought any Expression Fiber Arts. But what happened is I went to my yarn store a, several weeks ago before the last podcast episode and I had purchased the mustard and black yarn that I'm going to use to make my Hufflepuff scarf. Sorry, there's fuzz flying around. While I was there, I saw some yarn that literally like almost took my breath away. I looked, I saw it and I was like, Whoa. wow. Now, I didn't buy it. I said, no, no, it's $30 a hank. I, that's a lot. I don't think I can swing that. But then I kept thinking about that yarn for the next two and a half weeks, <laughs> three weeks. I kept thinking about it for three weeks. I thought about that yarn. So to me, that means I really did want that yarn because I couldn't stop thinking about it. And when I show it to you, you will understand why. So I went back to my local yarn store, which is Stash, a place for yarn, on Tuesday this week, which they had knit night. So I went and I did knit night and I managed to snag two skeins. And by snag, I mean I literally managed to snag two skeins. What I did not know is that this yarn was part of a trunk show that was supposed to have been sent back already. They had all the yarn in a box next to where it was. When I saw it, they just hadn't shipped it back yet. And they were supposed to have shipped it back like Friday the week before. And it was Tuesday and it just hadn't happened. So I got really lucky because <laughs> they mailed it out like the next day because I... If I had been there two days later, it would have been completely gone and I would not have been able to buy it. Now, the yarn is called La Jola, which this is a Cana uh, Canadian, it's a yarn company from California. So it's in Spanish, it's probably La Jolla, I would imagine, La Jolla. It is 100% superwash merino, 400 yards for 115 grams. This is the colorway Blueberry Cobbler. Oh my God, it's so pretty. And this is the one that, this is the colorway Singing the Blues. This is not even showing up as vibrant as it is in real life. So this is showing up on the screen more blue than it is. It's more of a turquoise blue. Maybe if I do, I don't know. I don't know how to make it. It's not going to show up correctly. This is like a, like a deep turquoise. And it's got parts that are darker. Now, I don't have this in the hank because I had them cake it up for me at the yarn store because I don't have a ball winder. <laughs> and I did not want to hand wind 400 yards of this. Someday I'll get a ball winder. Maybe Christmas. We'll see. But I bought these two, and if I had been made of money, y'all, I would have come home with like eight of these because this blue, there was an equally amazing purple one and a green one that were so rich and deep and just, just fantastic colors. 
and it's so soft. I am really sensitive to wool. Superwash is generally okay, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes even that bothers me if it's not really soft. This doesn't seem to cause me any itchiness at all. The, I bought these for a very specific project out of the Shawl Project book, number three by Joanne Scrace and Kat Golden for this shawl. It's called In Bud. So I bought the blue to be the solid color and the blueberry cobbler to be the contrast color. It's a crescent shawl. I don't know when I'm gonna start on this because I've got to finish that sweater and then I ship Timber Shawl along shawl first. But you can tell two different people caked this up. So the yarn store owner caked this one and then her um, one of her employees caked this one. This one's smaller. <laughs> and taller. So this one is like much more tightly caked than this one. I don't know. I'm so happy. <laughs> I had some money. I didn't just like buy it. I had some money left over from a commission that I did. So most of the yarn was paid for and I could not be happier. Like if I could make everything out of yarn that was like this, you better believe I would. Like how could you not? It's so beautiful. But of course, I am not made of money. <laughs> is anyone really? This is what I'm made of. This was my, I have, um, what is it? My mom used to tell me that I had champagne taste on a beer budget. <laughs> this is my champagne taste and this is my beer budget. <laughs> I'm sure you can relate. And I, I don't have any problems using regular old acrylic yarn. I like it. Um, a Red Heart Super Saver is not my favorite because it feels a little plasticky to me, but mo I mean, acrylic yarn has come a long way. I like a good cheap yarn. I love to get a good deal, um, but I, there's just no comparison to this. So I think that that's all I have to share with you this week. I am going to edit this and get it uploaded as soon as possible so that I can leave and go to a Halloween party dressed as a purple crayon. <laughs> um, if you are going to a Halloween party or dressing up as anything for Halloween, I would love to know what you're dressing up as. Put a comment down in the drop down. It would be fantastic if you could tell me <laughs> what you're dressing up as. I think that'd be great. As always, um, thank you for stopping by. I'm so thrilled that you're here. I love doing this and you guys are awesome. And until I see you in two weeks, I hope you have the most wonderful, crafty October. And I'm going to go now because I'm just going to start saying all kinds of things that make no sense because I did not write any notes down for this episode. So have a great week. I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.